Bonjour à tous, je m'appelle Ingrid Napi, je suis ravie d'introduire et d'animer cette conférence. On va la traduire comme « Est-ce qu'écologie rime avec bâtiment ?» Et inversement, effectivement, la ville rime avec écologie. Alors, avec le plaisir d'avoir autour de moi, comme vous pouvez le voir, Julien Bayou. Donc, vous êtes sur le terrain. Avec Sébastien Bayou, vous êtes en charge de l'Europe Écologie des Verts et vous êtes aussi un... Uh, city councillor for puis, well, the region uh, of I also saw that your father's an architect and your mother's an economist, so but welcome. I'm sure you've got uh, many interesting things to tell us. And we also have uh, Guillaume Patrinal. Guillaume, uh, you're the founder of uh, Woodeum, so Wood Constructions, but also uh, chairman of the uh, Fondation du Patrimoine. So before we start this seminar or this conference, I've been asked to tell you, but I can't remember what this is called. There's a system where you can ask your question. Ah, it's called Slido, and you can um, send your question through this. So, a little bit of uh, context, uh, briefly, um, the COP21 uh, in uh, 2015, where all countries uh, commit to reduce their greenhouse gases uh, emissions in order to fight climate change. So this is the backdrop, if you like. 55% uh, of the global population lives in towns, cities, this figure will reach uh, two-thirds of the uh, global population by 2050, another key date that we need to bear in mind that we'll be coming back. And uh, these countries generate 70% of uh, carbon, especially uh, big cities. Third point, there is um, a little change in the local representatives. Uh, there's the cities 40, uh, the 40 biggest uh, cities uh, that get together and think about uh, how uh, greenhouse uh, emissions can be reduced in town. It's kind of uh, um, G20, but for 40 cities. And the idea being uh, to find a solution to reach uh, uh, carbon Zero. And then, for some time, we've uh, seen this uh, tidal wave of uh, the Greens, whether it's with the European elections or with the uh, uh, local elections in France. Uh, uh, we've seen uh, uh, a change in uh, major cities in France uh, uh, turn towards the, the Greens, uh, Bordeaux, Grenoble, Lyon, Strasbourg, small cities, Poitiers Tours, and so on, and Marseille. And we know that, uh, uh, no, it's the first um, uh, it's the, the, uh, the ecologists are, are the political movement that uh, the younger generations are the most interested in. So you won local elections, and so Julien Bayou, I'd like to ask you, how on your side do you see uh, the green city of the future? How can you bring together, you know, ecology and city, which of course requires that because cities are made of concrete, uh, are dense, and uh, um, how can you bring the two together? Well, thank you very much for this invitation, and uh, well, yes, of course, something can be done about this. I'm delighted to be here today, and. Uh, when you mention these recent uh, results, of course, this uh, shows the, the responsibility uh, that uh, uh, we have, and uh, our mayors will be working a lot on the project. But the idea is respect of to respect these climate agreements. But beyond that, there's the question of well-being. The, the green movement, the ecological movement, um, wants to reduce all kinds of. Uh, uh, pollutions, um, sound pollution uh, and air pollution, and, and the idea is to also save money. And the idea is to start a, a virtual circle. And so this is what we're committed to. I, um, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, debunk uh, this, uh, um, you know, uh, economy versus ecology because uh, the two aren't opposed anymore. I'm a regional councillor. And for us, the idea is to help 
uh, support the, you know, the, the economy. But we ecologists, we want to have a say through regulation or uh, through support to certain activities, uh, as opposed to uh, uh, let people do what they like, which uh, um, if you take the CECI, you know, benefited the major groups who uh, uh, used it to their advantage. But the idea is to support a virtuous uh, activities that generate jobs, that are ecological, that are, are good for, for the territories. So this is really the idea of the economy that tries to support the ecology. And so in town, it's the same, if you like. Um, We've undergone for the decades uh, a vision of uh, uh, cities and, uh, where the heart of the city, uh, you know, would uh, um, suck up all the energy uh, to the detriment of the suburbs. And, and I'm quite happy to talk with Guillaume Patrinal. He was uh, the manager of Uniram Valamco because uh, this discussion would not have been possible years ago because Unibay Aramco was, uh, you know, the big bad wolf, uh, uh, you know, getting rid of uh, uh, small uh, businesses, putting small uh, businesses, you know, out of, uh, out of business. And, uh, and what you did is extremely interesting, I must say, because you've created this company which um, goes beyond greenwashing to really, you know, do more than just uh, pay uh, lip service to uh, low carbon um, uh, economies. And there are initiatives, there are alternatives that are shown, that are uh, uh, with pioneers. And uh, the idea is to transform this into a norm. So you have those who, you know, experiment, who show that you can, you know, build with wood, you can renovate with wood, it's better for jobs, it's better for the ecology, and our job, uh, ecologists, what uh, the public authorities do not do is to transform these activities into norms. The idea is to move from, you know, um, experience to generalization. And do you have in mind um, um, a city that would be a model as regards uh, uh, sustainable cities or the green cities? No, I, at this point, I can't. Uh, uh, answer. We need uh, a few more mandates. I mean, a few cities are very late. Marseille, take Marseille for instance. Marseille has been designed for people who live there. The, the, the schools are collapsing, literally. Buildings are just collapsing. Uh, transports are just totally inappropriate. And so there are anti-models um, to, to move toward the city where life is enjoyable. This is the product of 40 or 50 years, the cities we we have. In Ile-de-France, we consider that half of inhabitants would leave if they could, because for decades we played on the uh, attractiveness, competitiveness to uh, attract investments from abroad, but um, we never considered the well-being of people uh, living, uh, city dwellers. And so it would be dishonest to say, I mean, Bruno Bernard, chairman of the Metropole of Lyon, said there's what you can do in two months, there's what you can do in two years, there's what you can do in six years, and then you can also sow uh, the good seeds for the rest. Yes, uh, you mentioned this phenomenon of exodus, you know, Paris is leaving uh, uh, city dwellers and Paris wants, the municipality wants to attract or retain people. The idea is to uh, avoid uh, people leaving the de France region now. But I have another major figure for you that you need to bear in mind, which is, of course, the carbon footprint of building, the building sector. Uh, is one of the biggest uh, greenhouse gas emitters. We have an ecological carbon footprint, which is important, 27% are way before transport, 5% uh, of uh, energy consumption. So this is my question for Guillaume. Of course, cities are building, cities are mean mobility, jobs, dwellers. How can we reduce this building, this city, this city's carbon footprint, not only by building, taking into consideration what's already built, being built, and what must be destroyed, and why would? Well, we need to come back to essentials now. And I know that this morning, Laurent Fabius said that against climate change, we are not doing, you know, what should be done, not 25% of 25% that should be done. And um, climate change will bring about more casualties than COVID-19. The issue is simple, it's emissions. And I saw the light, uh, I mean, 
I mean, it was the uh, COP21. Uh, I was just like any other promoter. I just tried to reduce consumption and kilowatts per hour per square meter. So I was told about passive houses, positive energy houses. And then at one point, I met during the COP21 with carbon four and a number of people who told me, of course, there's this issue of kilowatt hour per, per square per meter, but the big issue is CO2, CO2 emissions. And when you um, calculate the carbon footprint of a, of a building, what pollutes is building, because concrete. Concrete is a wonderful uh, product invented in 1820 by a French polytechnician, uh, Monsieur Vicard. It so happens that uh, cement, concrete, uh, it emits a lot of CO2. We need to get sand, which uh, we need to get deeper and deeper, and uh, we need uh, um, iron also. Uh, and to transport it, we need these uh, um, uh, trucks um, that we see along the Seine. But a concrete project is a huge plant transferred in the heart of the, of the city, and it's a trauma for the city. And so me, as a promoter, I want to build a city, and if I can do it, I want the lowest carbon um, footprint as possible throughout the life cycle of the building, building, um, designing, building, and um, decommissioning. And, and the, the government did it, as the, now we have the RE2020 there. At the end of the year, there shouldn't be one building anymore that will not be calculating its carbon footprint. We are slightly ahead because we um, bumped into this wonderful material, which is wood, is a renewable material. Not only doesn't it issue carbon, but it it, it cuts, it, it, uh, it traps carbon. So uh, I hope this tree here is, is not dead, but this tree has spent its time eating CO2. It um, kept the C and it reduced, re rejects the O, the O2, the oxygen. So, but trees don't don't grow, you know, to the sky. So this wonderful tree that grows, if I don't do anything with it, it's going to fall, it's going to burn, and it, then it dies. And then there's the opposite. Um, there's so-called putrefaction or oxidation of materials. And so what we claim is very simple. I mean, and we accept, I mean, it's not everywhere. Forests must be protected, but we accept that we, you know, uh, use reasonably uh, trees, and we're not going to transform them into matches or, or boxes or, or burning material. No, these will be the uh, walls, uh, you know, supporting walls. Uh, and there will be floors, and when you, a wooden, you make a wooden floor, a f wooden floor is uh, there for centuries, and so we can build what we call a carbon well, and then it, this is not absolute anymore. And this is the idea of WO2. Well, but there are technical constraints. I mean, I've looked into this, sorry, and uh, these uh, wooden facades are possible, but it's much more difficult to build beyond 28 meters. Okay, so this is the question of height. Uh, you know, I, I've um, rethought the, uh, the question of, uh, you know, uh, height, because, because, I mean, I'm a promoter for residential housing, but also um, uh, tertiary buildings. And, and people ask me, what do you do against the pandemic? I'm not going to build very tall buildings where everyone is in a vertical circulation on 30 square meters. You know, I mean, there's a little problem there. So what have we been doing so far? We do average size, medium size uh, buildings with staircases everywhere outside with big terraces to reconciliate with the nature, we uh, plant trees, and we try to have a nicer life. It was interesting what you said earlier on, uh, uh, you say that people are, are running away from residential areas, but they're running away from office uh, areas also. And we promoters, what do we need to offer? What can we offer? We can't tell people. I mean, we need to come up with a, with a place where you go to work and it's nicer at work than at home. If you want people to come back to work, it must be nicer at work than at home. Well, as we listen to you, uh, it seems that offices, you know, uh, skyscrapers uh, are, are not as nice. Well, it's going to be more difficult because people want to open windows, they want terraces, they want to use a staircase and not the lift. Um, and so it doesn't mean it's all over. It just means it's going to be more difficult. Non, il y a
and it's not only you know uh, the work you do. It's not only where you work. Because uh, let's say let's run away from la défense. I mean, there's of course this issue of the, the surroundings to be stuck in a tower. And la, and la défense is something. But then there's also what you do. Yeah, let's come back to what we are here to talk about, which is uh, ecology and buildings and real estate. So we want uh, a density to avoid mobility and, and using land. So how can we bring this together, the, this issue? I mean, uh, um, how can we how can we bring together this dense city which will not be you know made of concrete but which would be made out of wood which technically cannot reach very big heights yes but you, 28 meters that's uh, what uh, Osman did so it's fine uh, okay that's for France but London take London I mean London uh, they're you know competing to build the highest tower yes but what's the point it's competing, you know, to build the tower, highest tower. I mean, there was a tower where there was a major accident, and the, the people who were injured uh, have not been compensated anymore. So we don't know who's responsible. Um, I mean, I can't remember the name of this tower, Jeux de Trennes. But if, if the idea is to have the tallest uh, city, but with the uh, uh, biggest uh, uh, casualties, uh, biggest number of casualties, well, that's ridiculous. When I say dense zones in Paris, I mean, it sounds worrying because the 10th and the 11th district are extremely dense, much too dense. So to, you know, make cities denser, depending on where you, you're starting from, it, it may change. But there are many places where there is not this very big density, but it's not Paris uh, and the um, uh, surroundings, the suburbs. Then there's the other uh, question of uh, multipolarity. The idea is to avoid this cliché. The worst cliché is you have one million people in the uh, 93 who cross Paris, don't stop there to reach another department, the 92, because that's where there's offices. And the other, and the, in the evening they, they just commute and the, everything is done the other way around. Yes, but I'd just like to say that La Défense is a mixed sector. Maybe you only see buildings, but there are just as many uh, uh, buildings as residential homes. Um, is this is true. No, it's not true. Yes, it's true. Uh, okay, let's come back to wood construction. And uh, what about the cost of concrete, low impact carbon concrete? Well, low impact carbon concrete, it's a little bit what uh, Renault and Peugeot said. They say uh, we've got an, um, um, a thermal engine, but uh, explosion motor, but there is no, um, but, but it consumes less. It, it's more or less the same. Um, when you build with wood, what, what I'm trying to say is, I mean, I've been, I started seven years ago, and for two and a half years, I didn't build anything, I just did engineering. I worked on engineering with uh, the team of engineers that joined us, and in fact, if there are uh, engineers who don't know what to do, they can always send their CVs. And we are 100 right now, but I don't want us to be too many. But we've done engineering because, culturally speaking, everything was designed for concrete, so we had to reinvent everything. And today, wooden, constru uh, wooden constructions are carbon traps, well-being for inhabitants, but it's also uh, a new way of building, and that's why we have eight times less trucks to to, uh, to, uh, to, to build, uh, and it's much faster to do the, the shell, to build the shell. So no dust, no noise, and, and this uh, material is five times lighter uh, than concrete. Um, and uh, and uh, you need to look at uh, the, the arboretum, which is the, this big project of uh, 123,000 square meters. It's the biggest project since Cœur Défense. I started my career with Cœur Défense 21 years ago, uh, 23, 4 years ago, I think, in fact, it's 25 now when I think about it. But this is the biggest uh, project from scratch on, in the same area, Nanterre Université. There's no artificialization because it was a big plant, uh, a paper plant, which 
enclosed, uh, enclosed for 10 years, and uh, in front of La Salle, we're going to be doing uh, 123,000 square meters with six hectares. Yes, but uh, I looked into this. There are 20,000 uh, people who live in La Défense, 180,000 employees. So the nine times more people who work than live in La Défense. So if this is a mixed neighborhood, then uh, we don't have the same definition. 23 people who live there, 180,000 employees. Okay, I give 15 points to Julia, a zero for you. Okay. I, I, I didn't want to let you say this. So the, I, I cannot take my phone, but I can tell you yes. But the major issue of uh, um, you know, having multipolar zones is fundamental. I think zoning is finished. No, no, unfortunately, zoning is still carrying on. Ask uh, Frédéric or, or ask uh, the Tour Triangle with what um, you know, the, the town hall is offering. We're talking about, uh, about uh, building new homes, uh, new residential real estate, and this is your job, and I understand. But I support this approach because we need to explore this innovation. I mean, ecology requires innovation because, in any case, the idea is to doing something else, something different compared to what we did in the past decades. But there's thermal renovation. If you take the current flow, the flow is what's coming in, you know, new, new homes. New homes are polluted less, are more renovated, although uh, uh, to please uh, the EGF, uh, we, we use this, uh, the, we, we put these little uh, radiators that, that, uh, that use a lot of uh, energy, but that don't keep very well. Uh, but uh, there's old buildings that are very badly insulated, and they, uh, they consume an awful lot of energy. And when you say the, the En fait, c'est inversé, c'est-à-dire que quand on est très mal isolé, I must say that when you have a very bad insulation, unfortunately, you need to pay to, you know, heat the seagulls or pigeons, depending on where you live. Now, there's a this big issue for climate, big issue for health, because there's um, these uh, fine particles that are being uh, thrown in the air, and there's, uh, non, uh, uh, there's so many jobs that can be created and that can be relocated, and this corresponds to the 30th, uh, 13th uh, pay slip. Now, and this is, for instance, as Laurent had you said, this is a quarter of a quarter of a quarter of what should be done. I mean, it's in our interest to insist on this, and I Frankly, I don't understand. I'd like to have the vision of the entrepreneur. I don't understand why it doesn't work. I mean, we're ready to spend billions on this. I mean, it, there's nearly no limit to, I mean, these are the, the projects of the 30s. It's the new, the new New Deal. It's the Green Deal. And this is, uh, I mean, everyone wants it. Uh, and unfortunately, the Macron candidate uh, promised 4 million renovated uh, homes, and we are hoping to get 200,000 in the next four years. Uh, we're very far from the results. And, and I asked the Prime Minister why this did not ask, and I just cannot understand why it doesn't work. So it's win-win for uh, town halls, it's win-win for architects, and I just don't understand why, uh, where the problem is. Is it because we want to build but not renovate? What's the problem? Okay, I'm not a specialist of renovation, but um, I do have the view that there are so many means on the table. In terms of um, turnover, renovation and building it more is equivalent. But these billions for the, uh, this new plan, I mean, it's quite impressive. I mean, this is not my job, but what I believe is that we must renovate these old buildings but cities, you know, um, evolve, and therefore we won't only be renovating what's existing. We need to transform this, yes, but uh, these buildings are not used uh, the, the same way. Uh, people don't live the, the same way, you know, the uh, ground level sometimes just open um, to, uh, to life. You have a restaurant, you have the, the gyms, and uh, so we are totally changing 
the way we are using um, office buildings. There's this uh, relationship between at home and uh, elsewhere. All this is changing with the digital, new digital world, and uh, the new city must adapt to this. And there's a very good example. I mean, I uh, bought, uh, um, you know, um, a, a tiny building uh, in uh, uh, 700 square meters, very badly insulated. It was made of concrete, and I realized it had been designed by an architect who built the Knit, Zerfus. And what did we do? Well, we kept, we kept the shell, and we insulated the building, and we added an extra wooden floor, which is absolutely beautiful. And this is the city of the future. So I keep the, the this, I mean, we've emitted to carbon, so not just going to destroy it, because it's there, it's done, it's done, it's done. It's done. And we ex we're not building a tower, we're just adding one or two smart uh, floors, and we totally change the relationship with the ground and the way we use the building. And that is the model, as far as I'm concerned. But we cannot say not uh, one uh, single extra square meter, because this is just not logical. And, and the transition, the carbon transition, needs economic growth. And that's probably where we uh, disagree. Uh, yes. So in um, Besançon, this is one of the election uh, hobby horses. Uh, we, it doesn't upset people. We're talking about uh, net. Um, the net. Besançon is less affected. Uh, the 11th arrondissement is similar to Seoul. You have the number of inhabitants per square meter that's uh, very high. Besançon is lower. So uh, this idea behind um, behind all of this is reviewing the city depending on usages. So there are former barracks, military barracks. Uh, they're made available for to create artist studios, for companies, for startup companies, and you can review their use and even envisage multi-usage. I'm a local council member. We have the uh, in charge of the property uh, management of the uh, schools, uh, but actually they are, uh, the, they are used, these schools, uh, during school time. Um, but during the holidays, it's just that we could break, bring these and make these um, buildings available to other people. We could densify. You mean that you would reuse it, reuse these buildings at another time? So if we control. So, for example, if you buy, um, going back to Airbnb, if we buy a flat, so regulated use of Airbnb would be a way of densifying the use of the flat. So square meterage and everything. So we're not um, trying to um, oppose the environment and savings, but uh, just question uh, the end use and um, in this, and so. There are lots of cities because of malls that have lost their um, the center of the towns. So there is a document or a book written about this. How do we how do we destroy the centers of the towns? So, for example, in if you go to these cities, Béziers, everything's for sale, and there's a massive sort of issue to do with property, and it could be a way of reducing mobility and redensifying and restructuring. This is a real topic, isn't it? They have too many square meters. The revolution in the office space is going to mean that it's going to be there's going to be less service place, and it's going to be better. There's going to be the shops; they're going to remain. They're going to adapt, and they're going to be offering new. Um, Wet usages, but there'll be there'll be less square meterage. We have too much square square footage. Same for the office uh, office space. We have too much square footage in uh, the workplace. Teleworking will be less and better. We're going to have to give up square meterage for offices. That was the previous conference. Now let's come back to building and the environment. No, well, we want to talk about all of this. Okay, but this is the topic of this um, conference.
Now let's go back to the forests, uh, topic of forests. Building wooden building, renovating with wood, is that feasible? Well, as long as it's biosourced, yes, yes, it can be renovated with wood. Okay, so why do we read that there's a lack of maturity in the wood sector in France? Are we importing too much, importing this wood? Does it mean that it, um, for, um, it, there's a carbon footprint that's too high and it's not environmental? We don't have an environmental subsidiary today that's uh, very structured in France. We don't have Danone or we don't have the Danone or the Peugeot of the wood sector, uh, construction sector in wood. It doesn't exist. Often, sometimes people choose, or often people choose concrete. Well, because of the concrete, there's, there was not much demand. So there's this real political sensitivity. There's the customer appetite for it. There's even the, um, the financial appetite for it uh, or desire for it. So insurers, financial people, banking, the banking sector shareholders say, we want you to work on low carbon emissions. And then uh, mayors, we've just talked about that. So this subsidiary, uh, wood sector subsidiary, is going to develop. And my hot topic at the moment, I'm calling up on the councillor here, and I've also talked about this with Madame Vargon. This, the topic really is to finally have plants that are close to the source, to the forests that can provide this biosource renewable uh, material that will then be able to replace concrete. We need it, and there is investment to make. And earlier on, you were talking about jobs and employment. We're talking about jobs and employment. Our forest is there. There are 17 million hectares of forests. We're gathering in less than half the wood that's produced in France every year. The production, additional production, less than half is harvested. So that means that the other half will stay in the forest, and it'll be uh, used for to be. Um, you know, it'll for, it's for, for putrefaction purposes, and then it will uh, deal with the emit, emitted carbon. Now, I was told, I heard that there was chemical uh, chemicals used in uh, forest use, and uh, that's not true. Um, so the forests need to be, um, you know, dealt with and used. Now, one last question. What do you think as an environmentalist? You, we know that uh, forests are the green lungs of the world and that they absorb carbon. The forest fleet in France is mainly uh, owned by private people. So what do you think about all of this? The forest is fairly young in France. The tree you were talking about. Um, needs to be 500 years of age before it captures the and uh, the carbon fully. So there are a few elements that need to be talked about or developed. There are some areas in France that need to become wild again, some forests. But actually, we're talking about the um, the areas that we're talking about that need to go back to the wild. Uh, uh, the wetlands mainly and the uh, areas along the coast. But there are also a lot of uh, small forests in France and there's a lot of loss of potential uh, in terms of the fact that they don't actually use these forests. So we're not trying to um, create a sector, a wood sector that's fully industrialized. The government is saying we want to um, cut forestry uh, use by 70%. But we need to structure the wood sector. We need to, for example, make the make sure the plants are close to the forests, and this will add value. So we'll be producing wood en masse that we export, and then we're importing um, this wood that's been processed. It's um, more costly wood. It comes from Scandinavia, from Austria. So we're talking more about structural changes. We need to work on the wood sector in an intelligent way. Um, we need to bring it uh, into. Uh, to, we need to organise it in an intelligent way, and we need we're, we need to relocalise the added value of the wood sector. We need to process the wood here, to use and build here in France. Uh, this is economically viable, and it avoids a lot of transport. So that will create jobs and added value in the wood sector. Now, the other problem, the decision-making situation, the arbitration, is that we need to leave some of the forest to age so that it can reach its full potential. And then when you cut forests to the ground and you only replant uh, seven types 
of trees, there are se- uh, certain types of trees, there are seven in France, uh, then you expose them to hydric stress and uh, major events. For example, the um, forest fires are linked to the fact that we have only one type of tree and the fire can propagate much more quickly. So we don't have this long-term vision in forests and we are deploring the fact today that the uh, state is not uh, taking this into account. It's dealing, leading to a great deal of stress with people and managers who manage forests. They don't want to be turned into financial directors of forests. So we have a system in the wood sector that uh, will bring in a system in the wood sector that will bring in more uh, more jobs and reduce uh, unnecessary transport. So we have this whole program that's being developed. Okay, so in France, uh, what I would say is that in France we like differences and we're quite uh, we ha- we're into ideas in France. I travel a lot. We don't have any production in France. We work with Austria, the Austrians and Swedish uh, and Swede- Swedes to process the wood. So what are we lacking? We n- we're lacking investment in the wood industry. So do you go and get uh, um, raw material? No, I get a piece of wood for walls to make walls. It's the just to give you a figure, we use 35,000 cubic meters per year of the um, uh, of this type of wood for building. We don't have the capacity, though, in France to produce it. So we have to source it elsewhere. Uh, France, uh, so this com- Vendée is a region in France, uh, produces uh, this material for the building of uh, um, homes. And so in the end, we will be able to produce enough of these, this type of wood to build and to replace uh, concrete used in building. But, so there is a real challenge that we need to meet in France, and I think that we need to be able to find some sort of agreement that will link protecting forests that are um, heritage forests and that are in danger. The, the drought we had this year was an historic one. So if we hadn't done this at the end of the 19th century, we wouldn't have had been, we would have not have been as prosperous in France. So I think that we need to be careful in how we uh, make decisions for this forestry management and use. No, I was just saying that the drought is, challen- is important, an important element to take into account um, for forests. Uh, we need to replant, we need to have different types of trees. Okay, so I don't think, I don't see why we can't have a a system where we cut trees down over a a spread of 20, 30 meters. So in Austria, they uh, don't fell whole all of the forest. They just choose an area in the forest, like a strip. So I don't see why we shouldn't be doing this ourselves. So, So what would your last comment be about this? Well, our, what we're fighting for is uh, to stop deforestation. We're, um, link, we're looking at what Mr. Macron says and then what he allows people to do, for example, in Guyana. In Guyana, he uh, allows these, um, he allows gold mining, so this means a deforestation. So we're fighting that. We need to manage the forest, not not to fell them for some of the, some of the parts of the forest. Some of the forests need to be left uh, to become wild. Some of the uh, forests need to be uh, f- the trees need to be felled. We need to diversify different types of trees and uh, replant different types of trees. And of course, we need this, these forests to be able to build low carbon homes. Okay, so it's an, and buildings. So it's now a time to ask questions. You can ask the questions directly via the application. Voilà, mais ils ne peuvent pas les poser. Euh... 
Okay, so you can ask your questions via Slido. I can't see any questions. Mud, are there any questions? So we'll soon have the European Heritage Days. I'm in charge of the foundation, and we're now going to add protecting uh, natural areas that we deem to belong to French national heritage. So on the site of the foundation, um, since it's up to me to talk, you can all uh, look on it. We um, uh, accept donations, one euro and more. You can go onto the website. You can look at the 2,700 topics that are dealt with and uh, are endangering forests in um, France. Well, we have uh, Chantilly Forest, which is in um, danger, serious danger. What about perma, um, permaculture? Really? So perma farming is a good solution. It means that we can use biodiversity of plants to fight disease, to encourage better growth of plants and so on, and reduce substantially the use of chemical uh, fertilizers. It goes back to what we were saying, really. When you do si just plant single or a single type of tree, um, we have more problems in, on di with biodiversity and resistance and resilience of the forest. So uh, mixing the different types of trees is a type of permaculture applied to the forest. Um, it's, um, it respects the biomimicry system as it used to re exist. It's more resilient, more useful, and it's better in the end for human beings. That's the link you can draw. Guillaume asked you a question. You have a minute left. Um, do you have a question to ask Guillaume? Yes, I am very interested in the, your career development. Um, I'm, I want to know whether there are any, there's any resistance in the concrete, um, in the world of concrete. When you see challenges, you know, like, for example, you're a wood, you produce wood buildings. Um, in your former environment, the concrete sector with your partners, how do they perceive this um, development of the wood sector? And if in the future the public authorities were uh, to take on their responsibilities and give priority to wood constructions, how would that happen and how would that work out? Okay, so this goes on to uh, the, the subject of administration in France. Now, there are two things that I noticed when I started becoming interested in this. You have all of the regulatory uh, corpus of, uh, or the corpus of regulations, and I hope one day you'll have to, you'll be dealing with this. So you have all of the legal rules and regulations and administrative ones, and then you have a level, second level administrative complexity, and I discovered this in the wood sector, and that's all of the standards, all of the, uh, the committees and public uh, organizations produce and these are mainly these uh, standards are mainly produced by existing players some people might call these uh, lobby groups but they're main existing uh, groups I've never said the La Fashion do not be making money and so on but I think that you need a public authority that actually decides at some point or divide, makes a decision so when the general delegate of the low carbon emission um, group ends up in a meeting with 25 people where there are 24 people um, defending the structure as it was previously and she was on her own and she's on her own and she's the only woman because they're all gentlemen, uh, suit wearing gentlemen in the meeting. Well, yes, you, they, you realize that there's the world of yesterday and the world of the future and the duty, I think, of politicians is to, uh, is to see this and, and make a decision. It's not just, you know, making a decision and sticking to it whatever, at whatever cost. It's really just looking at the situation, looking at the carbon footprint, what it means for buildings, and who can actually fully, truly calculate the ca carbon footprint and check where the sand for uh, for concrete making is coming from, where the tree is com coming from, whether they, they've taken into account all of the transport of the wood as well. And that's where we're really waiting for uh, political decisions and input. So I'm going to, uh, there, maybe there's an effort to be made on communicating and teaching people uh, about this. 
Uh, yes, that's why we're expecting ESSEC to come into play and all of the people who are training our next generation to uh, play their role. Okay, we have to hand the floor back. If there are no other questions, no other questions, we'll hand the floor back and we'll meet up very soon for another discussion. Thank you very much.